Is ExxonMobil's dividend safe? Are they going to have to cut it? Or are they going to keep increasing it just like they have done every year for the last 37 years? But more importantly, is ExxonMobil a good investment in 2020? That is what I'll be covering in today's video. Make sure you stay till the very end though, because I will be actually revealing, first of all, what price I reckon is an adequate price to buy ExxonMobil at. And secondly, what expected annual return you should be getting if you invested today in 2020 in ExxonMobil stock. Because that is the whole point of investing. It's getting $1 and turning it into $2 over and over and over again to infinity and beyond. Hello guys, my name is Ricardo Torres and I am a dividend growth investor and the founder of Escaping to Freedom, where I teach people like you how to get more freedom in your life through dividend investing. I release investing videos just like this one every week. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And also this is a new kind of video. This is a, a detailed stock analysis. So if you actually enjoy this and you want me to keep creating these kinds of videos, make sure to give this video a like. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to promote my channel so it reaches more people. And it's also going to let me know that you have enjoyed this kind of content so I will know to create more of the same. Finally, if you have any more ideas for other stocks that you would like me to analyze and make a video just like this one, let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to do that. All right, so this is how this video is going to work. First, I'm going to explain what the company does to make money. Then I'm going to analyze its past performance, both in terms of dividends and earnings, as well as stock price, because ExxonMobil stock price has not done so well in the last few months. Then I'm going to look over the company's financials and their balance sheet, just to see whether they have a solid financial foundation, because that is a vital when analyzing a stock. Then, like I said, I'm going to work out a fair price using four different valuation techniques. Then I'm gonna show you how much money you could be making if you invested in Exxon Mobil stock today. And also what I personally think of the stock, you know, the pros, the cons, whether I have invested in ExxonMobil. Little spoiler, I have. I'm a long-term shareholder in ExxonMobil. I'm going to include timestamps to all of those sections in the description below. So if you wanna skip ahead, you know what to do. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with what ExxonMobil actually does. So ExxonMobil is one of the largest energy companies in the world. And not only that, but it actually used to be the largest company in the entire planet. Now, the last time it was there was in 2013. And after that, it's basically been a monopoly of Apple and more recently Microsoft. But I like to keep it simple. What does ExxonMobil actually do? How does it earn money? Well, in simple terms, ExxonMobil is an oil and gas company. So it discovers, it extracts, refines and sells oil and gas. In fact, it actually produces around 3% of the energy needed to run the entire world. Needless to say, that's a lot of energy. Now, the reason I chose ExxonMobil to make a video about is that it's been pummeled very hard in terms of its stock price over the last few months. Take a look at what's happened in the last six months. It went from a stock price of around $70 back in January 2020, all the way down to a stock price of 31 US dollars. That's actually a drop of around 55 now, over the last few months, it actually has recovered. It's now trading at around $48 per share, which is pretty good, but it also means that it's got a very nice dividend yield of around 7.2%, which is why ExxonMobil is so interesting at this point. Now, the reason all of this has happened is twofold. First of all, ExxonMobil relies on the price of oil. It's something it cannot control because it's a commodity, and it's recently gone down to some historical lows, okay? It's, it's recovered a little bit, but it's still very, very low, especially considering the heights that it experienced in the early 2000s. Now, secondly, the global pandemic happened and the demand for energy lowered. You know, fewer people were driving cars, airplanes are not really traveling, therefore ExxonMobil, you know, there's less demand for oil and that just keeps pushing the price of oil further down and down and down. Now let's talk about ExxonMobil's dividend because that's really what I'm interested in. I'm a dividend growth investor, and what I talk about here on this channel is mostly dividend growth investing. And the highlight is that 7.2% dividend yield. Now, normally I would consider that too high, but it's Exxon. Exxon has got a very long history of dividend increases. In fact, it's been increasing its dividend nonstop 
for the last 37 years. In other words, the last time that ExxonMobil didn't increase its dividend was when Return of the Jedi came out in theaters. That was 1983. And if we have a look at the last 20 years of dividend history, the dividend has gone up from 88 cents per share in the year 2000, all the way up to $3.43 in 2019. Now, since then, ExxonMobil has not increased its dividend. In fact, it hasn't increased its dividend for the last five quarters, but that's okay. It's still technically got up until eight quarters of paying the same dividend until that dividend streak has to be reset to zero. But what I want you to notice is that the dividend growth has actually been pretty good. Over the last 20 years, it's increased its dividend by a compound annual growth rate of 7.3%. And there were actually periods where the dividend growth was pretty high, especially from 2012 onwards. You know, for three years, it actually increases dividend quite a lot from 1.85 to around 2.7. That was a pretty good time for dividend growth. It has to be said that from the year 2014, 2015 more or less, the dividend growth rate has definitely slowed down. Over the last three years, it has averaged only 4.8% in average annual dividend increases, which is okay. It's nothing to call home about, but it's definitely not that good. But that's got a very easy explanation. The price of oil uh, ever since May 2014 has basically plummeted and it's basically stayed down at these very low levels for the last few years. That's why, you know, ExxonMobil makes less money, its earnings grow slower, and therefore it cannot afford to keep increasing its dividend at such a high rate. And we can actually see this reflected in its earnings. And this is definitely a red flag. ExxonMobil's earnings have not done very well over the last few years, especially in the last 10 years, as you will see here on your screen right now. It's gone from $6.23 in 2010, that's earnings per share, down to $3.35 in 2019. That's an average decrease of 6.7% per year in its earnings. Again, that's a red flag, but at least we know why it's happened. I've said this a million times already, but the price of oil really dropped in the last few years. That's why, you know, ExxonMobil just simply cannot make enough money as long as the price of oil is that low. So where does that leave ExxonMobil in terms of its dividend and its dividend growth streak that it has worked so hard to be able to get up to those 37 years? Well, first of all, ExxonMobil has actually frozen its dividend. That means that this year it's not going to increase its dividend. Now, because of the accounting of dividends, even if it maintains its dividend at its current level for the entire of 2020, if you add up all dividends in 2020 and all dividends in 2019, that's still going to be a 1.5% increase, even at these levels. Plus, ExxonMobil CEO Darren Woods has already said that it's going to maintain the dividend. So a dividend cut doesn't look that lightly, at least for the time being, with all the information that we know. We don't know what's going to happen in the next six months, the next five years, right? So for now, it looks like ExxonMobil might be able to maintain its dividend. But that's not the whole picture. I now wanna show you what the payout ratio has been for ExxonMobil. Because the payout ratio, if you don't know what it is, it's how much of a company's earning, right? How much money they make is actually paid in dividends. If that amount is too high, it means that if the company cannot make enough money, it's not going to be able to earn enough money to even pay that dividend, let alone maintain the business and everything else. So a company with a low payout ratio is very, very important if you want a long streak of dividend growth and basically to grow your money and earn more dividends every year. So this is where the bad news starts. It should be no surprise that ExxonMobil has not been able to even cover its dividend for quite a few years. Again, that is due to the price of oil. Here we go again, I keep mentioning this, but that is so key in an energy company that is based on the price of oil. If we first look at the earnings per share payout ratio, we can see that, you know, at the start of the decade, ExxonMobil was pretty good. It had a pretty low payout ratio of around 22%, around 30% over, you know, from 2010 to 2014. But then as you saw in this graph, from that point, the price of oil really plummeted. And that is reflected in the payout ratio of ExxonMobil. It experienced a hike in 2015, still manageable, still 75%, definitely too high, but not over 100%, as unfortunately is the case in 2019. In 2019, and more so in 2020, that payout ratio is significantly over 100%. Obviously, that's a massive red flag. 
Normally, I would not invest in a company that has such a high payout ratio. If we now look at the free cash flow payout ratio, which is another measure that I like to look at, again, it's a very similar story. It had a low payout ratio for the start of the decade, but then it went up significantly in 2013, reaching crazy levels in 2015, 2016, and also 2019. So again, that dividend is not covered by free cash flow either. So those were the bad news. ExxonMobil is in pretty bad shape at the moment, but at least there is a silver lining that I think could save this company. But before I tell you what that is, if you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's gonna let me know that you enjoy videos like this and I will keep making detailed investment analyses. And also it tells the YouTube algorithm that my videos are good and it really, really helps to support my work here on my YouTube channel. But with that out of the way, the reason that ExxonMobil could actually be saved in a way, it's that its balance sheet is very strong. That is something that the CEO actually said when asked about whether the dividend was safe or it was in danger of being cut. And he said that the number one way that they were protecting themselves was by having a strong balance sheet. So check out ExxonMobil's debt to equity ratio over the last decade. I normally look for a debt to equity ratio of less than one, okay, that's where the limit is. And ExxonMobil's debt to equity ratio has been really low pretty much consistently over the last decade. There was a slight increase uh, in 2015, but overall, very small debt in relation to the company's equity. It's also got the interest that that debt has to itself very well covered. The interest coverage that ExxonMobil has had consistently has been extremely high. Uh, you know, it's, there's been times when it's been lower, there's been times when it's been a lot higher, but as of late, it's got an interest coverage of around 30, 40 times. So basically it's fine. It can cover the interest many times. So in terms of its debt burden, ExxonMobil is doing very, very well. And it's also got a credit rating of AA from Standard & Poor's. By the way, if you wanna learn about credit ratings, I created a video, I'm gonna link it here, all about how you can find out the credit rating of a stock very, very easily. But yeah, ExxonMobil is a AA. It was recently downgraded from a AA minus, but it's still at a very good point. It means that it can borrow money it can issue bonds with a very low interest rate. So that's great for the company. If it struggles to pay its dividend, it can always borrow money very cheaply and wait until the price of oil goes back up and it goes back to making an awful lot of money. All right, guys, so what price should you consider buying ExxonMobil at? Before I get into any of this, I just wanna issue a little disclaimer that this is not investment advice. Don't just go out there and buy this stock just because some guy on the internet has told you to do so. Always do your own research, and I hope that this video helps to serve as the basis for that research. But always do your own research, always be responsible with what companies you invest in, okay? You are responsible for your own money. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you the four ways that I'm going to value ExxonMobil. First of all, let's look at the dividend yield. How much higher is the dividend yield at the moment in relation to its average dividend yield? Well, in the case of ExxonMobil, the average dividend yield over the last five years has only been 3.9%, which makes the dividend yield of 7.2% 84% higher than it's normally been at. So basically, you're getting a much, much higher dividend yield. Now, we can actually use that to kind of reverse engineer what price we should be buying ExxonMobil at. So using this method and only allowing for a small variation in the number, otherwise, you know, the result gets crazy, that says that the fair price is around $60 per share. Now we can do the same thing with this PE ratio, it's price to earnings ratio. Companies in general tend to kind of gravitate towards an average PE ratio. So if a company's PE ratio is very high or it's very low, over time it's going to go back to a certain PE ratio that the market likes to price a certain company at. And in the case of ExxonMobil, the average PE ratio over the last five years has been 24 and the current PE ratio is 18. Needless to say, the current PE ratio is significantly lower than its average PE ratio over the last five years. So again, if we find out what price it would have to go up to to have that average PE ratio, that price is $77 per share. Another way that I like to value a stock, especially a dividend growth stock, is by using the dividend discount model. I'm going to do another video about this in the future because it's a little bit complex, but basically you can work out the theoretical value of a dividend growth stock 
based on what return you're expecting from that investment, you know, how much risk are you willing to take, and also the expected growth in dividend. Now, remember that ExxonMobil has increased its dividend for let's see, 4.9% over the last five years. That has been the average, and it's definitely lower than it has done over the last 20 years. But I want to be really, really safe here because ExxonMobil is a stock that comes with quite a lot of risk. Nobody really knows when the price of oil is going to go back up. Nobody really knows how soon ExxonMobil can recover and can start earning more money every year. Therefore, instead of a 4.9%, I'm just gonna go with the 3% dividend growth rate and a discount rate of 10%. Click on calculate, and that gives me a fair value of around $51 per share. I'm pretty comfortable with this because this works out that if ExxonMobil were only to increase its dividend by 3% a year from now to infinity, this would be the fair price. A price of $51 per share should be fair in theory. Now, lastly, let's look at what analysts recommend. You know, these are Wall Street analysts professionals that, whose job it is to actually analyze and kind of tell investors what price they should be aiming to buy a stock at. Now, the average price target at the moment with 14 analysts is around $50 per share. So pretty much in line with the dividend discount model that I've just done. Now, since we don't know which one of those values is the most accurate, I'm just gonna do an average of the four. And that comes up to $59 per share. In theory, that should be a fair price to buy ExxonMobil at. Since you can now go out there and buy ExxonMobil at $48 per share, that is a significant discount. So your risk is actually being lowered by buying stock at that smaller price. All right, guys, let's now talk about what return you can expect when you invest in ExxonMobil stock. When you buy a stock that pays dividends, your overall return, or at least your overall yearly return, is made up of three different factors. First of all, it's the dividend yield, okay? That's how much money you get paid every year from that stock. Of course, as long as the company doesn't cut its dividend. So in the case of ExxonMobil, you're getting a 7.2% dividend yield straight away. Then we have to look at the earnings growth because earnings growth over a long period of time often correlates with the price of a stock. So if, if your stock's earnings go up by 10%, your stock price should also go up by 10%. At least theoretically, there's a, a million different factors, but overall, that's what should happen. And then finally, the third thing that you have to consider is whether you're buying a stock at a lower PE ratio. In the case of ExxonMobil, it definitely seems to be the case. You can actually assume that if that price to earnings ratio gets back to normal in let's say five years, you can actually work out the annual increase in stock price that that would give you. So in the case of ExxonMobil, I think the dividend is relatively safe. Okay, so you're getting that 7.2% per year in dividend, and then you have to add up the earnings growth. I really don't know what's gonna happen in terms of earnings, so I'm just gonna say 0%. I'm gonna assume that you know earnings are going to be very bad in 2020, possibly even 2021, but over the next five years, I expect the earnings to go back to where they were before. That's why I'm just gonna say 0% earnings growth, and then we have to work out the price to earnings difference. If we assume that ExxonMobil is going to go back up to that P ratio of 24, which is the average P ratio over the last five years, it actually comes out to 5.9% per year just to add up to all the other numbers. So if we add them all up, that actually comes up to around 13% per year. That is your compound annual growth rate that you could probably expect if you invest in ExxonMobil at these prices. Again, do your own research, do your own analysis. This is what I just personally reckon that you could probably expect if you buy ExxonMobil at these prices. And as an ExxonMobil shareholder, I bought ExxonMobil during that crash. I actually bought ExxonMobil uh, probably closer to around here. You know, I didn't buy at the bottom. I didn't get that amazing 10% dividend yield that you would have got if you bought it right at the bottom but I've got a pretty high dividend yield. It's higher than the current dividend yield, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, my expected return should be higher than if you bought it now, but that tells you a lot. I am a shareholder of ExxonMobil. I plan to hold ExxonMobil for a very, very, very long time, which actually leads me to the pros and cons of this company and you know its long-term outlook, and also you know my personal opinion about ExxonMobil as an energy stock. So let's start with the pros. Everybody needs energy. The world runs on energy, and one of the biggest energy producers in the world right now that's set up to stay there for a very, very long time is ExxonMobil. 
It's also a well-managed company. It's been at the top of its game for a very long time. It's one of only two energy producers in the American market that are dividend aristocrats. That's companies that have a dividend growth rate of over 25 years, the other one being Chevron, by the way. I also really like the strong balance sheet. It's got very low debt, it's got a good credit rating, and it's got a very high interest coverage. That's really good, and that really helps ExxonMobil to be able to withstand the cyclicality of the energy industry. Finally, if you buy at these prices, you're getting a really good dividend yield, you're getting a strong company, and it does look to be fairly cheap at the current prices. If it keeps going down, then in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, it's an even stronger buy, and I will probably be buying more if it keeps going down. Now let's look at the cons, the negatives of buying stock in ExxonMobil, whether that's for its dividend or its capital appreciation. Obviously the main one is that it's very cyclical. You might be more risk averse. You might not be able to withstand your stock price, you know, going from 70 to around $30 per share. That might not be your investment style. So if you are a little bit more risk averse, I would stay away from ExxonMobil. It's cyclical and it really depends on the price of oil, which again, it's a commodity. ExxonMobil doesn't really have any control over what happens there. So that's definitely a big negative in my opinion. Another negative is that the future of oil and gas is uncertain. The world seems to be kind of gravitating towards renewable energy. So I don't know whether in 20 or 30 years, ExxonMobil will still be at the top of its game. It really is uncertain. However, renewable energy is nowhere near to the level where it actually poses a threat to ExxonMobil. We've still got a long, long road to be able to get to a point where the entire world's energy needs are met by renewable energy. So that's kind of a problem that's always on the horizon. And you know, you should be aware of it. Then the last negative, and this is quite a big one. This might actually mean that maybe they freeze a the dividend for a long time. Perhaps if the situation gets even worse, they might be forced to cut the dividend. And that's because it's not being able to cover its dividend at the current earning levels. Now, earnings are estimated to be very bad in 2020, obviously, uh, possibly even negative earnings. So, you know, it might be a few years till ExxonMobil gets back to a point where its payout ratio is a more manageable payout ratio. So that's definitely a biggie to consider before you buy ExxonMobil. Now, my personal opinion is that it's been a bit of a perfect storm for ExxonMobil. The lower oil price has really hit it hard. It's meant that it cannot earn enough money to cover its dividend. And then on top of that, the pandemic happened and demand for fuel just, you know, reached pretty much generational lows. Uh, it's been a long time since fuel demand was that low. So it's kind of a perfect storm. It's pretty much in the worst situation that it could possibly be at. So I reckon that the next two to three years are going to be very hard for the company. But after that period, once fuel demand goes back up, once the price of oil goes back up, ExxonMobil is in a great position to really capitalize on that. They've got some interesting new projects that should keep it pretty much at the top of the oil and gas sector for a very long time. So yeah, if you look at you know, 10, 20 years, 30 years, I personally think that ExxonMobil is going to make you a lot of money. That's why, at least for the moment, I, I own stock in ExxonMobil, I'm going to keep holding, I'm going to keep buying if it goes down much, much lower. You're getting a really good dividend yield, uh, a company that used to be the biggest company in the world. It might actually go back to that level at some point, who knows. But yeah guys, that is the end of the video. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this detailed analysis on ExxonMobil in terms of dividend and in terms of owning the stock at the current time in 2020. Now I wanna hear from you. Do you own ExxonMobil? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you think, what is the outlook. Also let me know if you've enjoyed this video. Um, I, you know, I've been recording for about an hour now. It's going to be you know, really condensed in editing. But you know, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, if you enjoy these analysis, make sure to hit the thumbs up on this video to let me and also the YouTube algorithm know that this is a good video to share and let me know if you've enjoyed it. Let me know what other stocks you'd like me to analyze as well. But yeah, that is it. I will see you on the next video, guys. Take care, bye.